favorite storyline tomorrow night is Bo's return. You're wearing the C. You replaced him as the captain. What do you expect just in terms of the reaction and the fans uh, as he comes back to town? I think the reaction should be, um, you know, really good. I think people should welcome him and celebrate him on his return. And he put in nine really good years here, and he was always solid, never complained, was a great leader, just put in his work and um, someone that everyone can kind of go to if they needed to talk to someone. You know, it wasn't always the easiest years, and he always, you know, stepped right in front of it. So, um, yeah, he should be welcome, celebrated, and then, and, um, you know, after all that, we hopefully can get two points. Do you have a new appreciation of wearing the C after seeing what he went through and, and what you faced with us on a daily basis? Yeah, I have a great appreciation for it. You know, as just a teammate, you see it every day with him and how he was out in front of it, like I said. I mean, it's easy when we're 11-3-1, and one, but it's tough when we're losing those years. And... Um, so he did a good job, but uh, in saying all that, you know, getting a win tomorrow is more important. Quinn, what do you attribute the reset with you guys? You're so good at if you have an off period resetting, so maybe a loss doesn't turn into three losses. What I think, so yeah, I think just our maturity level and yeah. knowing what makes us successful, and I think we got a lot of hungry guys that, you know, aren't going to accept losing right now. Quinn, have you ever had as much coaching practices in, in game day skates as you have under Rick and Adam and the coaching staff? Because every day I'm watching teachable moments out there. Can you just break that down? Yeah, I mean, they're a massive part of our success, obviously, turning this thing around in less than a year, and I think they're just, um, every detail in the game is so dialed in, and, um, you know, we're not a loose group anymore. We're, you know, have responsibilities, and everyone know, knows what's required of them, and like you said, they're always, they're always teaching us, so we're always getting better, and I think guys have elevated their game, you know, with them here, and then, I think that just uh, the relationship they have with the players and, you know, obviously they're teaching us a lot. And, but, um, you know, I think they're, you know, for at least Footy, he coaches how he'd want his kids to be coached, you know. And I think he, uh, he can get the best out of guys. Finer points, you know, JT was talking about, you know, what the wingers learning how to pick up ball, pucks off the wall. I watch Adam work with you guys a lot on angling. It's, it's other stuff aside from systems, stuff that we maybe don't see as fans, but makes a difference for you when it comes game time. Yeah, like when I say details of the game, I don't always mean uh, X's and O's. I mean like things like that, little details that guys are, you know, improving in and, um, you know, helps everyone. When the league governors met today, and one of the things they talked about was looking at ways to reduce sort of the regroup and the reset in overtime, and you're a guy obviously that sees a ton of like, over time when it was brought in, was frantic, it was back and forth, trading chances. We've seen strategy sort of roll into it. What do you make of the way that overtime is these days? And do you like the idea of being able to reset and sort of try to find your play? Yeah, I love three-on-three -three overtime. I mean, it's one of the most exciting things in the game. Like, the players love it. The fans, I think it's really enjoyable for them. You know, there's nothing worse than, you know, when teams have the puck the whole time in three-on-three -three and they just take it back and they're not really getting any chances, I think. We had, you know, one game like that in Carolina two years ago, but um, it doesn't happen too much, and we've only had one three-on-three -three game so far this year, so. Uh, maybe you can just start with the injured defenseman, Susie Myers, and maybe an update on Bruce Boy, if there is, and we haven't seen or heard from him in a long time. Yeah, Bruce has been skating on and off, so he's still dealing with some issues. Um, Seuss is going to get another evaluated today, but it'll be more week-to-week -week with Seuss. Um, and then we just precautionary with Mizey. I think he'll be fine, but uh, it's just precautionary. So uh, um, he looks good for tomorrow, but we'll see how he skates tomorrow. Susie, I mean, got hurt there in that final yeah. preseason game. And you thought then maybe it was week to week he was a quick healer. Can he be a quick healer again? Yeah, we'll see what the tests are. But, you know, it's, yeah, it kind of sucks because I thought his game, the last few four games, he's been, him and Mizey have been coming together like as a really good pair for us. So, you know, it sucks, but 82 games are going to get injuries and, We've been fortunate on the injury bug, uh, some parts of our, our of our lineup, but you know the, the, that's that's where the depth's got to come. You know that's where Abbotsford comes into play, where you know you're going to need some depth to, to fill in holes. You got a couple options in Abbotsford. Uh, you go with Barose. What's uh, the reasoning behind that? Um, well, actually, uh, it was between him and Willan, and I think Willan tweaked something. So, uh, but it was like a 50-50. You know, uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, Harose has got a really good hockey, IQ, like a great, insane hockey IQ. So. Uh, he's played some games, you know, you know, he's played, was he, double-digit games that he's played with us. So he knows he knows the system, um, and we're not scared to play him. Outside of video, your exposure to Bo was brief uh, when you came here. Uh, Bo, how's that? 
Oh yeah, sorry. Sorry, we just got I got two bowls. Got Bill Billy and two. So I got both Besser and. What what do you come to appreciate even when you're starting and, and doing free scouts and and two? Uh, oh, but just you know, just a two-way guy. You know, uh, obviously outstanding power play, the bumper. Like you know, that was the one thing when I took the job. I was kind of salivating, going, "Man, you, you know, it's hard to find like excellent bumpers, and he's he's that category of upper echelon bumpers." Um, you know, and, and his uh, overall, just overall game. You know, um, uh, scores a lot of goals around the net, a lot of tips. You know, those are playoff type of goals. There's a lot of pressure when you come back in a trade like that. Who really has had his looks of late, and what have you make of this? I think he's around the puck. I, think, I like this game last before uh, he was on the puck. That, if he can get on the forward check and strip pucks, and you know he, the goals will come. Um, but he's got to play inside, and I think he's been doing that lately, and that's why he's getting the looks. You know, he, he tends to when he gets in trouble, is he's on the outside, and you know he's not using his body position. And I feel the last four games he's, he's using his body to shield pucks. Um, and it's working for him. So now, you know, the next step is, you know, hopefully they'll go in for him. You've always said there's never enough practice time. How, how much of the reset that you guys are able to do in games, Rick, even if it's one period you reset, how much of that is attributed to what you do on the ice on the regular basis? Yeah, we're not going to have, like, the last two weeks and the next couple of weeks, we're not going to have a lot of practice time. And, you know, I, I, the importance of practice, like, if you look at a reg, regular game, some guys probably touch puck overall the whole game, maybe 30 seconds. Some guys maybe a minute, some guys a minute and a half. And, that's why if we, you know, we had a short practice today. You know, guys, you know, long trip, five-hour flight, a lot of things. So it was a 25-minute practice. Value that 25 minutes. You know, a lot of guys were doing some touches after and before practice. I liked seeing that because um, it's hard to, you know, every, every team goes through it. You know, I talked to a couple of coaches on the road, and they're, you know, they, I think one coach told me they had one practice in like two weeks. So everybody gets that chunk of the season. So that's where you really got to rely on um, video or even today. We didn't know no video today. I thought. Guys, have, we've crammed a lot of stuff the last week, so just let them get in here and get out. Where did you tell like Mills when you took him out of the lineup? Well, I I've, uh, just, you know, there's about three or four guys that are going to be fighting for that spot. You know, uh, you know, I'm not going to have him sit in the shelf much. But uh, he's also, I, you know, like I love Nils, but he's got to be reliable. You know, the Toronto goal was a big goal that, you know, he made a, two big mistakes for us on that goal. And he had, you know, I like the other end, but he's got to make sure that we can rely on uh, him in the defensive end. And that's what it's going to come down to some guys game to game. Unfortunately, we got healthy, there's some healthy guys. We got some guys in Abbotsford are knocking for those positions too. And that's a good thing. Rick, it seems like every moment out there is a teachable moment. And I've been really impressed watching your staff. Last year, I know it was working on systems and training camp. But it seems every practice, every pregame skate, you're working with somebody, Adam's working with somebody, the Twins are working with somebody, Yogi's working with somebody. How valuable has that been to your success and also having their knowledge to pass on the little things? Because I've been watching with body positioning, pucks on the wall. Can you just talk about that? Yeah, I, I think that you got to touch a player every day. You know, it can't just always be me or you know, footy or the twins, I think. And what we do is we make sure, like, we have a meeting in the morning. Who's got this guy? Who's got that guy? Uh, what do we have to do? You know, today for me it was Lafferty because, you know, poor guy. I got him in center sometimes. I got him a wing. And I felt that he needed some, some tips on, on taking some rims on some body position. Poor guy, a guy, you know, but he's a hybrid, right? And I told him that's why he's valuable to our team. He can play a center or wing, and he can play left wing if he has to. So um, just wanted to do some, some board stuff with him and, and then, uh, like, Huggy was asking for, he had a couple of times where he's going down the weak side with the puck, and he felt that he could get better shots off. So you saw him after practice working on that. So that's a coach's dream when you get guys who are self-starters. The margin for error is so, so slim at this level, especially with the game being so quick. But if they can pick up something here, it can make the difference between winning and losing and also scoring a goal and defending one. Yeah, the, the game's a half a second, right? And, uh, you know, when we're on our game or even a player knows it, if you're half a second, it doesn't seem like much, half a, but it's huge in hockey, that half second. And you can practice that half second, and that's that anticipation. Um, you know, I think if a guy like, like, Josh, like Dakota Joshua, like where I feel his half second's been quicker the last bunch of games. Like earlier on, it wasn't. And that half second to him is an eternity. You know, he has to, if he doesn't have that half second, he looks slow. But when he does, you know, in front of the net or, you know, coming out of the corners with pucks. Um, and he's been practicing at it, and that pays off. So that that's just one example. You reach him on a different level, too. I think he had 20 hits in a four-game span there. When you talked about competition for jobs, yet there's a perfect example of a guy you needed to reach, and he responds even in a physical way. Well, I mean, listen, I love the kid, and he knows. We need, you know, in a Canucks jersey, we need some big bodies that can 
play that game. You know, we don't, you know, you got Giuseppe who plays that game. You know, th- you know, we need him to play that game for us. And I think that he's taken that to heart the last three, four games. There, there's a, there's a, there's a need for that. Why not knock the door down and, and, and be one of those guys? There's been a, um, an arrest at the end of the playoff season. Uh, yeah. I'm curious to hear your thoughts about it. It's only happened yeah. three times. Before. I didn't watch it. I, I can't yeah. watch it, uh, to be honest with you. So I, I, it's hard for me to comment. I mean, it's a, such a tragedy. I mean, I mean, I don't know how that's going to play out, but I, I couldn't watch it. I apologize, but I couldn't, I couldn't watch it. Yeah. Governors met this morning, and one of the things they talked about was possible changes to overtime. Yeah. This idea of regrouping. Right. You've seen the evolution of overtime from an all-out sprint back and forth to now it is sort of puck possession. Does it need to be changed? Is it something the league should look at? Or it's funny. Me and Patrick had dinner last week, and he told me they were going to. My feelings was they had. They, I think they had general manager meetings before that to discuss it. Um, I think you got to be careful. You know, what are you going to do now? You can't go over center. I, I think it's just that you got to be careful. I, I don't know how they're going to change it, but um, I don't know. I watch three out of three. I see Mc, uh, McKinnon and I see uh, dry, uh, dry Saddle and McDavid still get their looks. We get our looks. Look at Kuzi against the Rangers. He, he got his looks. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure what you can do. Maybe if, if you regroup it twice, you blow the whistle. I don't know. That's what they were talking about, but I, I, that's, a, that's a judgment call on the refs. And, then you're getting all those different decisions, but I think you'd leave it alone for now. I don't know if we should we, we should take over that. Me personally. So Pedersen celebrated his 25th birthday yeah. on the weekend at the top of the NHL scoring race. Nice present for him. Um, it's kind of a big hockey milestone. Is that maturity that he's at now at 25? Do you think part of his success this season? Oh yeah, for sure. He's a lot more uh, engaging. We had a, a line meeting with our line today. He's just so engaging now. Like he knows, you know, he almost took over the meeting. Like uh, maybe last year, I wasn't here much. I was only there 30 games of last year. I don't know in the past. I actually talked to Travis Green. He was a you know very quiet guy, but definitely a guy that uh, you know he'll take over a meeting with that line, which I love to see. I actually told him he said you should run the meeting sometimes because you know you have that credibility. Plus you know if you see something, go for it. And I think that's maturity. I'd be in 25. I think he wants that leadership role. When you were coaching in Arizona and were having to match up against him when he was on his hot rookie streak, what did you see from him then and sort of how has his game evolved? Well, we had a guy swing with him in the neutral zone every time. So (laughs) we did what we did against McDavid. Like, you know, you got got, got to take his time and space away, you know. I don't even know why I'm telling you that. I don't want the other coaches to hear this stuff. (laughs) No, but he's just, you know, there's no secret. You know, he's just a guy that you got to know know where he's on the ice. And uh, when he does have the puck, I'll tell you what, I'd be going to the net every time because he'll find you going to the net. You hit uh, game 50 with the Canucks uh, on the road trip. Oh, really? Obviously, it's a, it's a long run away. you got a lot of work to do, but what are you happy about uh, with your team and the way they're playing after game 50? I, 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 you know, I keep saying the buy-in, and there's buy-in. I just think that uh, the guys have embraced what we're trying to do. Uh, we got a long way to go, like you said. Um, just the, the communication. Um, with the group is, uh, I think it's outstanding. And if there's a problem, we deal with it, you know, and uh, they're not afraid to hear it, uh, vice versa with the coaching staff. So I think that's the most thing I'm proud of is both sides could be really communicative and, and not afraid to say something to, the, to that group. I, I think that's a big, that's a big thing for winning. If you, if you want, if you're not scared to say something, you know, it's uh, sometimes it's uncomfortable and, and they embrace that.